Hey guys, welcome back to more Reddit stories. Today we're jumping into r slash I don't work here lady, where totally oblivious people mistake other people for being employees at places they obviously don't work at. And we've also got some I do work here encounters thrown in just to mix things up. So thanks for tuning in today and let's get right into today's stories. I'm literally wearing my uniform and I have a key. So I used to work at the Way of Speed for almost three years. I was one of two full-time closers, so that meant I had a key. We usually closed at 11 p.m., but on Friday and Saturday it was midnight. Now to the story. On this night, it was a weekend, so I was going to be there until midnight. I cleaned my store, closed the tills, locked the door, and wait outside for my boyfriend to pick me up. 30 minutes later, he finally shows up. I get in the car, and as we're just about to pull away, a lady cop pulls up behind us with lights on. She walks up to the driver's side door and asks what we were doing there. I tell her that I work here, and I just closed, but my ride, pointing to my boyfriend, was late. Well, it looks suspicious being in the parking lot after closing, said the cop. How is it suspicious that I'm at my job after closing when I'm the one responsible for locking the door, I said. I even showed her my uniform shirt. Well, it's still suspicious. I don't remember everything that was said, but my boyfriend began to argue with her, and she eventually let us go home. That was four years ago, and to this day, I wish I would have just unlocked the store and set off the alarm. Yeah, after the cop realized her mistake, she was definitely still trying to play it off like, oh yeah, well it's still suspicious, so that's why I'm here. When it wouldn't really hurt to just be like, oh you know, my mistake, sorry about that, you guys have a nice night. Tesco manager got right in my face. About 14 years ago when Reliance Security provided security for Tesco stores, I also worked for Reliance but was based at the airport. One morning after a 12-hour night shift, I decided to go into a Tesco store I pass on the way home and get a sandwich. I had my work uniform on but I was wearing a gray jacket on top, so people would know I'm not on duty. So I go into the store and pick up a basket and head to the sandwich counter, and I'm browsing the selection and I hear someone say, Excuse me. But not expecting anyone to be talking to me, I carry on looking for my desired sandwich. Then suddenly, the basket is slapped out of my hand, and there's the snarling man's face less than an inch from mine, and he says, I'm not paying you to shop. Get to the front of the store right now. So I'm tired and very confused, and can only muster the reply, What? He said, I told you to get to the front doors. We've been open for customers for the last 30 minutes and you've not been at your position once, and now I find you buying snacks. That's when the penny dropped and I simply replied, I know the store's open to customers. I am one. I work for the same company who provides security, but I am not your guard. With those words ringing in his ears, all the color in his face drained away when he realized what he had just done to a customer. Suddenly, he became completely apologetic and said if there was anything he could do for me, he would gladly help. I informed him I would like help carrying my basket around the store as I was tired from a long night shift, and he replied he would get someone to help me immediately, and I then told him I did not want someone else to carry my basket. I wanted him to carry it. So I originally only intended on buying a sandwich, but to teach this guy a lesson, I spent 30 minutes in the store and went in every aisle. I just love the way OP capitalizes on this and makes him his little helper. I think what was probably going through this manager's head, aside from being mortified, was the fact that if he didn't do everything he could to make sure that OP didn't report him to his company, or even the security company, then this guy could be in big trouble, and probably even lose his job, because that is not a way to talk to anyone. My sympathy for everyone who actually works for this guy. Scolded for closing a store I don't work at. This happened a couple weeks ago. Made a quick run to a party supply slash craft store for a cake project I was working on. Place closes at 8. I got there at 7.45. Found my item within 10 minutes, paid, and went out to my car. I am sitting in my parking space still at 7.57, just reading the packaging of my purchase to double check something, when this other car pulls up beside me. I see this white woman in her late 50s get out, and I can see her walk to the store entrance from my rearview mirror. The automatic doors don't open for her. I go back to reading my packaging and look up when I hear a woman's voice near my closed window. Something something closed. Politely I crack my window down like a centimeter to actually hear her. She was ranting that they were closed and I was like, oh yeah, they close at 8 now I guess. She cut me off. It's not 8 yet, you're not supposed to be closed yet, it's 7.58. I don't work there. She cuts me off again. 
I don't care if it's two minutes or two seconds to A, it's illegal to close early. She's kinda close to my car, so I don't wanna just pull out and tap her with the car mirror and have her sue me or something, which is why I didn't leave yet. I firmly, a bit louder, repeat, I do not work there. Big obnoxious, exaggerated arm gesture to the empty parking lot using this loud antagonistic sing-songy tone, she says, I don't see any other cars here, insinuating I must be lying about being an employee. Pretty sure employee parking at that place is behind the building. She moved over a bit when she did that grand arm gesture, giving me room to comfortably pull away, so I started the car. As I rolled up the window, I said, I am a customer, you effing banana. And I held up my receipt to the glass, then shifted in reverse. She was still yelling something when I left. And to be clear, there couldn't be any real reason for this lady to assume I worked there. It's mainly run by teenagers, and I'm in my late 30s, and I wasn't wearing any work-like attire or name tags. I was in loungy crap. Gave up on life heather gray colored joggers and a multicolored flannel shirt. Employees wear bright solid colored shirts and not sweatpants. The best part about this story was you effing banana. I'll have to remember that one. Oh, and they're very descriptive color as well. Gave up on life heather gray colored joggers. New employee threatens to impound my car. I'm the owner. Alright, so to make a very long story short, my wife and I run a tow company and a race shop. They're located in two different positions, though we do have a storage lot at the race shop for the tow company. I haven't been into the office in about a month and a half. During this time, we needed to hire a new dispatcher, and my wife went ahead and handled this, choosing a rather good candidate, if I must say. Now, with that out of the way, I can get to today's events. I showed up at the tow yard in my 96 Nissan Silvia and parked it in one of the three wrecker-only parking spaces in front of the building. A wrecker is the tow truck that is the size of a normal pickup truck and tows the car behind it, by the way. Having one of the three total wreckers currently on duty at the race shop and the keys in my pocket, there is no need for all three spots. And well, I own the place, so... As I walk in the front door, I went to say hello and introduce myself. And before I could get past hello, our new dispatcher immediately turned and told me that if I did not move my car, it would be impounded and it'd be roughly $250 to get it back. I think to myself, okay, I like your fire, let's see where this goes, and tell her, I will not be moving my car and it'll be just fine where it is, and turn to walk into the restroom. I did stay in the restroom for about 15 minutes until I heard one of our trucks come rolling in the front gate. I slipped out of the bathroom and used the side exit from the building to make my way around to my parking space, meeting up with my driver. Laughing, I told the driver to go ahead and impound it chuckled a bit as he looked confused, and I just told him to play along. So he hooks it up and pulls it into our gated lot around back in under 5 minutes, as I've now slipped back through the side door and walked back into the office. As I see my car go around the corner, I say to our new dispatcher, Hey, where's Brian going with my car? And without a stutter, she responds, Sir, I warned you if you didn't move it, it would be impounded. Pausing for a moment, I waited for it, and after maybe 6 or 7 seconds, she asked, Wait, how do you know who Brian is? I cracked a bit of a smile, slung my hand out for a handshake, and said, Hey, my name is OP, and I'm the owner here. The poor girl's face turned white as a ghost, and she immediately started reaching for the radio, not seeing the five guys peeking around the corner snickering to themselves, as they've all caught on by now. I tell her not to worry about radioing Brian as I'll quote, handle him, and ask her to sit down. Looking very frazzled, she grabs a seat in my office, and I sit down across from her, turn on my work PC while whistling to myself. After everything boots up, I pull up the ticket on my car's impound, and void it out and inform our new dispatcher of such. With a whimpery, yes sir, she's staring at her feet. Immediately behind her, all of the guys are hanging out in the doorway, all but holding their mouths shut. I look to our new dispatcher and stand up. I simply say, I really like the way you handled that. No one should be parking there unless they're one of the on-duty wrecker guys. Sometimes this does require them to put their cars here in a pinch though. Try not to cause any more friendly fire, yeah? And before she can answer, she's spun in her chair and seen all the guys watching. They erupt into laughter, and I asked everyone in the room what they want for lunch. The new girls is on me. Surely, she'll never live it down, but she's a part of the team now. This is great. In all honesty, she was actually just doing her job. There wasn't really any way for her to know that OP was actually the owner. So in the end, it just kind of turned into a bit of a friendly hazing, I guess. 
told a woman to fluff off. I worked in restaurants for many years. It used to be fun. Food Network made everyone a food critic and ruined it. Suddenly, people that could not boil effing water are telling me how to do my job. Anyway, I already had a new opportunity set up. I had three days left to write out the string and finish up my employment. Three days. That is it. We have a lady, let's call her Stacy. Kind of a boss level Karen, replete with stupid ass haircut, oversized sunglasses, and fake everything. And she is unhappy with the quality of her sandwich and soup. There was nothing wrong with either item, other than the fact that they did not come from Neiman Marcus. Keep in mind, we are not talking about a five star restaurant. Her server comes to me and says, Stacy said our food was garbage and demanded to see the manager. She was ready to show off her power for her friends. I walk over, stood tall, and asked what the problem was. She then began to berate me, personally, that she did not like my accent, Texas, and I was too ugly to be working in public. I pulled her plate along with the plates of her three friends and told her to get the f out of my restaurant and walked away with their food. She of course refused and wanted to fight. I tossed her my keys and security card, told her she was now in charge, and left. She followed me out screaming and threw my now former keys at me. My response was again, a hearty f you, I do not work here. A couple of lessons, always be ready to walk at a moment's notice, and don't put up with crap from anyone. About three months later, she showed up at my new employer. We refused to serve her, and the murder of Karen's with her. My new owner backed me 100% and told her, f you, leave. Greatness, I still send him a Christmas basket every year. Tourists think we work at the museum because we thought to Google. This is a story from a few years ago. My husband and I used to live in Boston. Boston is awesome for all of the great museums and history. One museum we frequented a ton was the MFA, Museum of Fine Arts. We used to go on average probably every three or four months. Anyway, one day we decided to go to the museum. As we approach the doors, we can see a whole crowd outside. People are trying to open the doors and peering in through the glass. We walk up and almost right away my husband goes, I'd better check online to see what's going on. Takes him five seconds to see that the museum was closed for a bank holiday. I can't remember which one. He says, yep, they're closed today. Bummer. Oh well, what do you want to do instead? The tourists who don't live in the area have overheard him and turned to us like a crowd of zombies. One says, it's closed? He goes, yep, that's what the website says. A lady jumps in and legit starts complaining to my husband, but it's our last day here. He says, oh, that stinks. We turn away and continue talking, trying to figure out what to do instead. There's not a ton to do in that area of Boston, aside from the MFA. Lady interrupts us. This is our last day here, what are we supposed to do? Now I'm annoyed. I just give her a disgusted look and say, Lady, what are you asking us to do? We don't run the museum. She stares at us with an idiotic expression on her face. All of the other tourists are still staring at us like we're supposed to do something for them. I grab my husband's hand and we walk back over to the train platform. It's in front of the museum. To this day, I don't understand why this crowd of brain-dead tourists thought we could open the museum for them. We were clearly there to visit the museum, same as them. That is it for today's stories, thank you for watching as always. If you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like, and I'd double appreciate it if you subscribed to the channel for more Reddit shenanigans. So take care everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.